Tony Fortunato from the technology firm. Today we're going to use Wireshark and do some DNS analysis. So I'm hoping you'll catch some tips and tricks along the way. Let's dive right in. So what I've done here is I've got a trace file of just DNS packets and for the people who wondered how I did that, from my capture screen I simply use the capture filter of port space 53 and that will capture any UDP or TCP packets with the port number of 53. Uh, if you knew it was all UDP then obviously you could just put UDP port 53 but port 53 will help you out because sometimes DNS would use TCP depending on a few factors. So there you go. We got all our stuff on the screen. So now what? Well the first thing we want to do is get rid of this uh, bytes pane at the bottom here. So again little review. This is the packet list, packet details, and packet bytes. So view, packet bytes, click gone. Second thing we want to do is probably measure DNS uh, response time. Because right? performance is typically gauged against response time. So here we go. We've got a uh, DNS query for plus.google.com and a bunch of other ones as well. A lot of queries. And the thing here is you need to find the corresponding response. So if you, if you ever have to what you can do is simply DNS and if we go find the transaction ID which is right there we'll right click we'll apply that as a filter and selected and it will find those packets uh, with those transaction IDs. Now as you can see right now what my machine did was it actually did a query to this DNS server didn't get a response within 33 milliseconds so it sent another one to my secondary DNS so it has the same query I'm sorry, the same transaction ID within the query. So this might be a little confusing. Uh, so th there's that part of it, right? But the other way of doing this, which is a lot uh, easier on the eyeballs and you don't really have to try to cut your grass a blade at a time, is to simply come within the DNS uh, query header here and it says responses in packet 14, right? And it's telling us a little bit about this um, response for this packet. Well, I'm going to go to response and packet 14. I'm just going to double click on that. Jump down to 14. Now here's the important part. This time here is Wireshark's calculation of the response time. So I'm going to add this as a column. The easiest way to do that is just right click and apply that as a column. Bang, done. Now this just says time, which is a little kind of misleading. So I'm going to right click on this, edit, and I'm going to change this time to DNS time and click OK and there we are so now down here you can immediately see this response was 47 milliseconds that one was 55 milliseconds you see that so I'm going to take my display filter off and now you can immediately see all the responses now if you want to make this even easier for your eyes and you just want to concentrate on the response packets well we can do that as well if I've selected a response packet and I go down here you'll see flags query response with no error so I specifically want those packets right click apply as a filter and select it and now I have all my responses from various servers and I can see the DNS response time now just a little note for you um, if you did change your time format to milliseconds such as I have well it doesn't seem to affect that so if it really bothers you, you can do what I do, kind of the uh, cheap and cheerful way of doing things. Just drag that column over a bit, and there you go. Makes your eyes kind of gravitate to that number a little quicker. There you go. I hope that helps. Have a good day. Bye for now.